Welcome to Learning Mode. This is lesson number four in our Multiplication for Kids series. And at this stage, we're going to look at one of the key elements in multiplication, which is counting in steps. Your child will be learning to count in steps, um, in steps of twos, fives and tens at this stage. Um, they probably won't be doing much further than that, especially up until sort of P3 age. Um, but if your can, child can, do challenge them, let them work away. But we're going to think about counting in steps and actually again giving your child that visual element of counting in steps. And the best way to do that is using something like a simple 100 square. 100 squares are brilliant for this sort of thing um, because they give that child a child a real sense of actually seeing those numbers and seeing the patterns, which is really, really important. This also will pull out key elements of the times tables for them um, when they actually work through this. Just print one from the internet. There's loads of free ones on there. Um, you can laminate it if you want. That means you can reuse it over and over again. Or you can just print a couple and use them for different um, things. But what we're going to look at today is allowing how you can allow your child to explore those patterns in those timetables and actually start to see that idea of counting in steps. So your child might be starting on their journey of counting in steps of two, fives and tens. Um, obviously you don't want to do these all together. I'm just going to show you for the purpose of the video, but you will be wanting to do twos first and then fives and then tens but it's just allowing them to see the patterns. It's quite nice if you do have one and you can colour in in different colours, then they can actually pull it out and have a wee look at it. So what I would encourage you to do is to give your child a colour and say, look, I want you to count in twos and I want you to colour in every time you're counting in twos. So they're literally going one, two. Oh, right, I need to colour in. One, two, I need to colour in. Now, if your child's getting on well and they're counting in twos, they can count in twos, then they can say two, four, six, counting in so forth, so on and so forth. And they can go right through the 100 square and they can immediately see the pattern emerging. Not only can they see that it's every other square is being coloured in, but they can also see the pattern going down. And it's a really nice way to talk to your child about patterns and numbers and number sequences as well. Then once you're happy with that or you want to then move on to the fives, again the same thing, count in fives, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ideally you would have different hundred squares or you can colour them in both colours so they can actually start to see the relationship between times tables which is nice as well. So they'll colour in, they'll make their patterns and again you start to see the patterns emerging for counting in fives. What's lovely here is then you can now have that discussion and say, hmm, now you've got a pattern. Do you notice anything about all of these? Oh, they've all got five in the units column or they've all end in a five. Oh, what about these? They all end in a zero. There are your little tips and tricks to start helping your child learn those times tables because immediately you can say, right, I'm going to ask you a number and you're going to tell me if it's in the five times tables or not. So you know the rule is, all five times tables either end in five or they end in zero because you've you've made your patterns on your 100 square and you can see that. So I'm just going to tell you a number and you're going to tell me if it's in the five times tables. So three. No, immediately because it doesn't end in five and it doesn't end in zero. 1,325. Yes, because it ends in a five. And it, it's a really fun game and just a really quick way of getting your child actually starting to help develop those little tips that are going to help them with their times tables. So then you will move on to your tens and the same thing, they start to see this pattern emerging that the tens all go down. Again, this is another really nice discussion you can have that 10 times tables always end in zero. So you can play that little game again. And also you can start to think about talking about place value in there as well, which will help them um, with their patterns. And you can say, look, do you see the pattern? Every time you jump down, every time you um, add 10 or you multiply by 10, you're jumping down in your little pattern. You can see every time, look, the zero doesn't change, the units don't change, but look, the tens number's changing. Can you see that? So it's again a lovely little discussion point to discuss all those things with your child and actually let them see the correlation and the patterns and sequences of numbers while actually really thinking about counting in those steps from that then you can move on to actually the physical, moving that practical 
resource away and actually starting to move into the more mental idea of counting in steps.